Hey guys, we're back. Whoa, how's it going? Uh, we are in the lobby for Bizzle Reef with Crank playing against... Do we find out who this is or are we just going to call him like Hanakana? Well, Ryang is playing against Hanakana. Not Crank. Or, sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> ah. Yeah, we, uh, Hanakana is just Hanakana. He's, he's no, it's not a, you know, username just for Chalange. Apparently this is actually his name and I guess he beat stats. Legitimately, 2-0, not like actually they didn't report it as a walkover, but um, that is interesting, <laughs> basically, because it's very rare to hear of an unknown take on a guy like Stats. That is pretty cool, actually. That's the beauty of, I guess, the open tournament format, you know? We, we've, we've discussed in depth about how much easier it is just to invite players and the viewership's better for it, blah, blah, blah. But like, if you do that, you take away that element where someone like this can kill a guy like Stats. And the man in question, of course, spawns in the top left, the blue Protoss barcode, Hanakana. In the bottom right, as the Red Terran, it is Ryung. I actually feel like if I say his name really slow, I'm, I'm like speaking Jabba the Hutt. Like, Hanakana Wanabuchi Han Solo. Uh, I guess that's fair. Obviously, it, it sounds a lot more like Japanese, as opposed to a made-up language. <laughs> I am aware of this. I'm just saying his <laughs> particular combination of sounds. I don't know. I think like Jabba the Hutt. Yeah, Although maybe Jabba the Hutt has like some extended dialect of Japanese for all I know. I don't speak well, I Hutt. Mean, a lot of these languages are based around some other <laughs> language or mishmash of languages so i mean it's not you could you, you could be entirely right like it could just be based off of japanese because it sounded legitimate when you made your example okay so first off yeah i'm awesome secondly i'm wondering about the dynamic of these two we actually don't realize that bad we've seen him play all kinds of races and even take on players better than him in some cases we know nothing about hanakana other than he just killed stats maybe pvp is the only good matchup he has Maybe it was a fluke. Honestly, we have no way to know. I'm really excited though to see how he how he fares against Ryong, because I think Ryong's a very stable and staple Terran to measure somebody against. To know whether they're good or bad would be how they fare against somebody like Ryong. I think would be a fair assessment to make. Sure. Also I mean oh, sorry, go, go on. No, after you, madam. Well you're continuing your point, so. Well my next point was just like also I want to see if Phoenix lift the tank and see what you were talking about earlier. I'm really excited um. for that too. I mean, it might happen. Yeah, it's PBT after all. But I was going to say, he's not going for anything cheesy, which would have been the first suspicion, like how cheesy is he, to take out someone that we know is very good with, you know, not knowing anything about you. Uh, it does add on that Mothership Core and an Adept, uh, take out the Reaper really quickly. But, I mean, he doesn't even have a probe that's that's across the map to go for the pylon overcharge. It just seems to be macro game. Ooh, okay. Uh, you guys have to enjoy... Just following the Reaper for a second because my browser just crashed for reasons. Okay. Well, that that sucks. Yeah, I'm trying to fix this. Sorry, guys. It'll be one sec here. Why? Uh <laughs> the uh, the Reaper managed to live, and the Twilight Council is actually the one on the way. So that's what I was wondering. Seeing the Mother's core, like, would it be a Stargate still? No, <clears throat> Twilight Council on a Robo okay, couldn't lead into uh, more dangerous things and just an expand. Uh, certainly any Warp Prism play in general is going to be annoying. Even if you only go for three gateways, you can still get a very sizable warp in to the main base. If you go for more, obviously, then there's uh, definitely an all-in you can do against an unsuspect unsuspecting Terran. But Ryung uh, actually going for the uh, tank push, which is very popular in Abyssal Reef. Yeah. Um, my Hits before Resident Glaives is ready. Depends on when exactly he wants to push out. Generally, it's either with two tanks or you wait a longer time for Stim, but it's a very long way off. I like this when players play to the map. There's not a lot of times you'll see this really executed, and I think it's a lot more obvious with Terran, but like taking advantage of this position is always great. Uh, the dedication of when they bring SCVs, of course, tickles my fancy, but we'll see if he goes that far or not, or if it's just going to be the tank walking over. Because for now, it's just a drop. Go to the main, drop a wood of mine, get nine probes, have everyone balance wine. You know how it goes. Totally. 
Well, you will probably see the graphical error of the Widow Mine burrowing. That is the, the, the audio slow. Oh, the no, slow fine. weird crab burrow. Do yeah. it again, do it again, do it again! The difference is absolutely- yeah, there you go. It's absolutely like whether like it, it scuttles a lot or doesn't. Like it only scuttles twice or it scuttles six times. Uh, it's a nice micro. The attack at the front is also happening though. Like because he was- uh, Hanakana was distracted, there was no attempt to stop. It was only a tank and two marines coming across the map. So that is now set up and the marines can just join forces with this and Hanakana. Uh, he's resident enclaves, but doesn't have a big army yet, so waiting on that production. Yeah, the overcharge pops, but as we see, the tank's pretty easily dealing with it. Marines dropped on the high ground, might not be doing much right now, but they do provide vision if the medevac has to fall back, so really good advantage to have them up there. Another tank rolling on forward, and this is gonna pr this is gonna push on a kind of off mining. This this really d uh, digs in deep now and forces him to engage. Now this warp prism can either drop on top of the tanks, which it looks like it's trying to do, or go across the map. Drop on top of the tanks though isn't working out so great. He's gonna take out one of the tanks, but at a cost, a pretty yeah, good that's... cost. Yeah, if you don't break this, then it just actually is it's pretty bad. It uh, looks like he will. The tank has to be picked up and well, maybe going for some extra probe damage. I was gonna say, oh. still at a cost though. Hit that shift die, right? Look at that income drop off. The probes being pulled off mining alone was devastating enough. I mean, it was pretty good economic damage, but Hanakana still has his Warp Prism alive and is still looking for an Adept attack on a Terran player that has been cut in army. Production only just finished up for them too, and they do not have Stim or Combat Shield. So it is a bit of a scary time, but it's Five gateways, not seven or eight. Um, yeah, there is this one expansion after this, but there's also a fairly sizable depth attack. Huh. That wasn't really going to work out. It's really interesting the way he kept his uh, medevac over there to scout. I like that a lot. I wasn't sure if he turned around to try and fake a drop going out or something or what his plan was, but this attack is totally, I feel, feasible for him to hold off. It's just not going to be easy. Uh, you know, these will funnel through. There's a lot of adepts. I don't think we're going to see him skip through to the main or anything, but unless those widow mines get some good hits, this is going to be a very difficult fight for Ryung. Yeah, it is not a wall. The widow mines are in the wrong position. The adepts might not get baited that far. Well, now they see the Widow Mines, so maybe they'll just back into the, the ramp. Oh, just gonna micro them forward, take the two shots. Ooh, Force Skull's gonna be able to good. cut off reinforcements. This is a very good attack. Yeah, very smart for Hanakana. Uh, nice shot in the Warp Prism, too. If he can remove that, I think stabilizing will be really easy. Uh, he's got enough Metabax to cover all his units, of course, but he can't get Marines forward. He can't pick up that Warp Prism. Things are dying, scoops up what's left, and he falls back towards the main. Ryung's production is really not too terrible here, but dealing with these warpins has proven to be almost impossible. Yeah, uh, Force Field cuts off a couple of units as well. He's actually going to run into their range anyways, which could be a mistake. Uh, a couple more warpins coming in here. He's also getting plus one and trying to saturate that third base, so that explains the lack of powerful warpins. And again, only on five gateways. Only had so much, but Ryung, while he took some damage, was able to stabilize, and he does come out with the better army if he holds. So now he has Bio with Medivacs and plus one and Sigma Combat Shields, and can actually probably do some return damage. He just needs oh. to find confidence. As much as I want to get into the sarcasm of three mules coming down at a time, 34 SCVs is still a pretty rough number to be at. Uh, his income's going to look okay for now because he was doing a lot of micro, he had a lot of extra energy, that's the extra mules, but. Those will, of course, wear off sooner than later. Uh, and as far as Ryung's goes, I mean, even if he doesn't produce anything else right now, his army's still better. At some point, though, this might change. Hanakana is sitting on really basic units, right? He's investing in Blink, the plus one zombie grub brought up earlier. But there's no Robo. There's no Storm. There's no next step for him. Yeah, there's no Robotics Bay. The, the, the lack of splash is yeah, certainly a problem. And even... With a regular, like a robo robotic facility, even an immortal could really help out against what you know is a growing marauder count. But uh, yeah, he is certainly on basic units, and it's going to be oh. a tough hold for the next couple of engagements. More prism attack will certainly help distraction. So, quick question: uh, I'm not sure if Olivia is referring to this guy as well, or just misspoke the wrong name. But if this is Gilzing, we've actually seen Gilzing before. Hanakana, that is. Well, that's what uh, that's what I'm wondering if she was talking about this person or maybe wrote the wrong name because that would be really interesting to me if that was the same person. But regardless, sure. Warp is very low. Couple shots, maybe take it out. 
Liberator's getting on top of this too. Yeah, these adepts are totally manageable, and that warp prism very low. Finally gets rid of this giant thorn in his side. Uh, this is Bjolzing. Um just changed his name, I guess. It's now on the brackets. So that I guess we have clear understanding of who it is. I mean we get we did see that name occasionally and cast him once or twice, but I really thought it was a uh, no, I'm pretty sh I'm pretty sure he's always been Protoss. I I don't remember distinctly. I want to see it was innovation. There's it was so long ago though. Like it was definitely I mean, this year, but it's like forever ago I feel that we saw him last. Yeah, clearly he was Protoss. I just I, his name sounds like to me probably. I don't know. Cuz there's uh, a Z in it. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Yo, Yo sounds like a guttural sound, so I guess that's all helps, but no, a Protoss, and the, okay, it makes sense that he would be able to take out stats, but I still wouldn't expect it a 2-0. No, it, it, yeah, it still goes back to the fact that, well, we may not have known much about Hanakana, we are seeing that Gilzing, or Hanakana, or whatever you want to know him as, is playing pretty solid against Ryung, but that was really the early game. You know, mid-game, late-game, this is looking like a lot better of a setup for Ryung. I mean, his army supply side, the army type of supply there. Oh, well, he's got, like, a, just an extra abundance of Widow Mines he's got here in the backside that he doesn't really need. They get shots off on the Stalkers. The bio's left mostly unscathed. There's almost no way to push through these Liberators with one Stalker to shoot up. This game <laughs> looks like it's about to be over. Yeah, it absolutely is. There was a def counter-attack that killed 13 SCVs, but it was eventually cleaned up. I mean... Hey, he went for a pretty dedicated attack. Again, it was five gateways and there was an expansion, but it delays tech so much. Uh, it really has to do more damage than it did. And I would say it was close to, to snowballing in Gilzing, in Hanakana's favor, but didn't, and puts him behind in the mid-late game. So this yeah. happens. GG. Cool. Ryung takes game number one. Yeah. It, revenge, stats, something. So... It, with all my stuff crashing instead of twitch alerts and stuff so I, hopefully those notifications are working now guys uh, well there you go I just hit the oh yeah and I guess we'll get the next game up we'll do some quick shout outs to Dehumanizer who just sub 19 months thank you very much Taco Stuff came back for 8 months a little bit earlier too Defoxy for 13 and then oh, Niku was a brand new sub welcome to the base trade brigade and thank you for that sub dude but oh man zombie grub so what? many cool things happened this weekend. PAX was pretty whatever for the convention, because I'm not, it's not an eSports thing. I'm an eSports guy. PAX isn't the convention for me, but the people and the contacts and whatever, they are for me. So it was worth going, but dude, they had the after party at the aquarium, right? And I don't know, okay. people may have seen me posting pictures or whatever, but it was just like, there was this dome we went into that was like underwater. So like you just literally look up and around and there's just fish, sharks and everything all around you. It was so cool. And I'm really sad I didn't get the uh, the diver, but uh, there's a diver with a Twitch outfit that came in. Everyone's taking selfies with him. Oh, that's cool. Wondering what you were talking about. Um, it's a lot of cool stuff, man. Time. It's a lot of cool stuff. But here's the thing I'm most happy about. Okay, we've worked with a lot of people, Corsair, uh, whatever sponsors in the past, Blizzard, right? And the one time we ever tried to make a jersey on our own, it actually went pretty terribly. So we've never really had a proper jersey. At the Lenovo party, they were just like printing out jerseys. Like they straight up had a printing press there and everything. So they had like pre-made, hey. pre-sized jerseys, and they would take your name, and then you put on the back of the shirt, and you just got your own custom That's jersey. Yeah, it's funny that Lenovo, I guess, is, uh, did that. Um... And they're certainly in, in trouble, so I am surprised they're still making headway in esports. Uh, anyways, and they actually, I didn't realize that my phone was a Lenovo phone. I just, I, I heard Motorola and I heard Android and I was like, okay, that seems decent enough. But every time that I pop it open, it's Lenovo. Oh, well, they stopped putting in the, the scammy like malware that they, they used to like six months ago. I'll be careful about talking about that zombie girl. <laughs> Entirely different context. I know. <laughs> All right, we're in game number two for the Illegal League, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I've actually got some other fun stories, but we'll save them for a little bit later. Spawning here in the bottom right, we've got the blue Terran player, Ryung. In the top left has the red Protoss. He is Hanakana. All right, so Hanakana, again, Gilzing, whatever you want to refer to him as. 
he put up a really good early game fight versus Ryan. And I stand by this statement because I think he did a lot of right moves. He applied pressure as he should have. And he almost, almost did enough SCV damage to Ryan to really make him sweat that game. Obviously he didn't, but it was very close. I don't think Ryan has an easy win here, but it's, to me, felt like there wasn't a mid game. To me, it didn't feel like there's a follow up, right? Like, what was the late game plan for Hanakana to choose Blink over, say, like Storm or something? Well, rounding out that gateway-based army, um, I mean, it does make a lot of sense. So you're going straight to Storm, you would have died to Liberators, uh, didn't have Charge, so it would have been Adept Storm, which is a little bit odd uh, to see. I mean, it's uh, bad. There was no amazing choice, although Storm maybe has a bit more comeback potential. If you do get the, the amazing Storms, than if you get amazing Blinks, it doesn't really exist. But it might more to do with the choice of the opener. He went for... Uh, Pretty much an all-in, and it didn't do enough damage. So close, yet so far, and you're always going to be in a bad spot after that anyways. Dels took a pretty bad engagement on the ramp, to be honest. I mean, he's down 30 army supply. There was no good one to take, but it was especially bad <laughs> with that final move in. And will Hanakana do something aggressive again, or play more to the macro style? I mean, Ryung did almost mess up his defense against that 5 gateway attack of Resident Glaives, so well, maybe Hanakana saw a weakness is going to try and abuse it. That's a good point, and if he did do that again, I wouldn't fault him for it, but my only thought is like, is Hanakana, because let's be honest, these guys are out there, the type of Red Ops player who can only do all-ins, who can only do the early game, doesn't really have that late game follow-up. Uh, or Gilzing, or again, sorry, I, I really don't know what we should be referring to him as here. Hanakana is just what I'm reading in front of me, so it's like the easier one to go with. Well, the... Uh, Build starts out similar, but still no Robo added on here. The Twilight Council is finishing up, and there is a proxy or hidden pylon about to go down, and I'm kind of feeling the Dark Shrine. Which, Ryong, if he got back into the main and saw still nothing, like the Twilight Council's not moving, and of course there's no Robo, uh, those would be big red flags. It's actually Blink, though. So, proxy pylon, legitimately for proxy. Yeah, pylon. slow warp ins, just different angle of attack. I mean, had a fourth gateway on it and make fast weapons. Blink's like not bad though in some scenarios, right? You know, Ring's like a Terran player. He likes to drop. He, you want to catch the Metavax. You got to go Phoenix or you go for Blink, right? So I, I can understand the logic of what he wants to do here. I thought DTs would have been a lot cooler too, just because we saw him control pressure really well in the early game. And I thought maybe that's the direction he was going to take it again here for game two. Regardless though, uh, Robo's on the way. He should be able to get Observers out. I don't think this dry uh, drop of it at Widow Mines will be too big of a problem to deal with. If any, no. but it still might get a probe or two. I feel like it's been a long time since I've seen a blink expand. I mean, <laughs> you have Stats, who is now dead, I suppose, going for uh, oh. quick Colossus. But for Hanakana to go for, actually, that's yeah, on a fourth gateway, so maybe still a bit of aggression, but still like a blink opener. I don't know, I feel like it's been a long time. <laughs> that's that, so that's much more doing. brutal than I know you intended it to be. <laughs> like, He's dead now. She's dead. <laughs> Uh, we'll see how this works out. Uh, Ryong is building tanks, so any aggressive maneuver with the Blink Stalkers I don't think will work out very well, but if they can take out this medevac nice and quick, that would be a great start. Oh, there's no pylon on the back for the overcharge, so that pull is actually a really smart move. Observer will be out there, so there shouldn't be round two on shots here. So unfortunately, with the Stargate, we're not going to see Phoenixes, and these cool tanks that are coming out aren't going to lose their guns. I'm not going to get to see a cool bug. Yeah, sorry. Hanada's <laughs> not the guy to do it. Uh, well, that was a full scout in the main base. It saw four gateways, obviously Blink, uh, the amount of stalkers. I'm going to assume that he, he's assuming that it's Blink and is going to have a defensive setup. Keep an eye on when, in, or if, I guess, the, the third base is taken. It should be taken. It is a question of when. Um, but yeah, if you got the stalkers like this, uh, usually you try and control the ground a little bit. You know, they don't have stim for quite a while, but there's definitely not really any way that Hanakana is going to do direct damage. I mean, even without the tanks, there's still a decent number of Marines. Um, but yeah, especially with the tanks, I can't see this doing a lot. Very quick Templar Archives after Splink. This is... So I, I'm, I'm trying to get around the idea of this build, right? As far as like order of operations. You go Blink first into Charge Lot Storm. 
I, again, I can kind of see the ideas behind this, but I think that I do like just the fact that he has gone for the Templar Archives, that we will see possibly Storms and Archons, and it won't just be stuck in this early game phase. I'm going to say, he must be going for an all-in. Well, I mean... Well, yeah, some of the third. That's, that's probably bringing the most alarms up right now. I mean, for Ryung especially, the Reaper's checking, no third. I thought it might be like a charge on all in, but he's getting storm too, so I guess the third is gonna come down. Uh, getting production first and foremost. Now a warp prism could still go for charge on attack. Maybe their base is even gonna be saturated, that type of play, because he's not building any more probes. But I wonder how smart Ryung is right now, by the way. So he saw Chrono on this and he knew that there was Blink already done, so he could guess charge, as he did see the Temple Archive researching as well. Very interesting. Uh, Medivac's still gonna take the Marines. I think, I think he knows exactly what's going on because he's gone back to Widowmine production too, by the way. Which I guess you still you still see, but not normally like double at a time this late in the game. A lot more emphasis on tanks and like every other unit. And for those who don't know, if you want to shut down charge lots, Widowmines are like your best friend. Sure. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Well, the third base does come down. And he could start producing probes and it's about halfway done uh, for the transfer. Yeah, there we go, actually. There there it is. But he definitely had an odd opener. As far as things go for PVTs nowadays, it's either like you're going for Colossus uh, openers like Stats does, you're going for Stargate openers like almost everyone else does, or you're going for like a Warp Prism opener, something that's around, it's centered around the Warp Prism doing uh, harassment and backstabbing, but while expanding. Don't see many blink into charge lot into expand with the storm coming out on two bases unless there was something that happened to the third I feel. Well, and it is such a it's like he's going for units that are really like well produced off a strong economy but alone might not have enough support. You know the storm's gonna have enough charge lot support. Well, he's I, at this rate he's not gonna have a lot of charge lot support anyways. Liberators tanks and multiple widow mines. We're gonna be on I think probably six or eight by the time he's ready to fight. That Archon's gonna be like immediately removed from the fight, no doubt about it. Charge lots come in, they're gonna get removed by the Widow Mines. And that's gonna leave the tanks to free fire with no opposition. This is a really scary situation actually for Gilzing, because I just feel like I like this army, but it's not good for what Ryung's doing, and because Ryung saw it so early, it was really easy for him to go to Liberators and Widow Mines. No, 10 gateways. Well, 10 gateways, and you don't take the gases at the third base. I guess that, that could be an overwhelming amount of charge lots. Uh, the gas has gone into storms that are now building on High Templars, and I guess he still manages to get an okay army, but it's like, yeah, it, it's still not overreaching Ryung's army supply. still down by 20. Only going to have one upgrade against Ryung's 1-1. One, one. Well, <sighs> this, this push doesn't make sense. There's no necessity to pressure anything right now. You don't know what your opponent's army looks like. No real information on the third slash possible fourth. I feel like Gilzing setting himself up for an attack that he doesn't need to do right now. If he can get damage, that'll be nice, but there's no reason to push the issue here. It's just an awkward timing for me. It seemed like very uncertain about when he wanted to attack. I was like, maybe two bases? No. Maybe three bases? Yes. Then it turns to three base all in, which... You know, this charge lot, storm, blink off of three bases, no gas. Okay, sure, but the, the process in which he got there was a little weird, in my opinion. And he is definitely having trouble. I mean, there there was a very strong Terran army that didn't get overzealous in the mid game and lose a bunch of units to drops or didn't expect charge lots or, or something like that. Like, Takana Kana is not going to be able to bust up here. Pretty sure. I love this tank, by the way. It's not got a lot of kills, but this has tagged almost every part of the army with splash damage as they kept walking up and forth there. Uh, and Archon was left behind. That's a bit expensive. <laughs> there you go. Uh, he does have a Warp Prism now going for harassment as he realizes that's not going to be bustable. It takes a fourth base. He's on his way to Colossus. And we're getting to a late game TVP. It was just the, the way that it was uh, developed. That was a little weird. Also adding on the gases at his third base. Um, I mean, it's it's... Something that they both are going to get maxed out, it looks like. So, more power to the Kurdos. I mean, I agree with you, too. Like, this this, this opening didn't make a lot of sense because it didn't react to anything. It didn't force anything. And he played to extra bases later than he could have. So, maybe not perfect, but maybe this is the Gilzing way. Because either way, he's coming up in the late game now with Storm, with Colossus, potentially here. Uh, 
Even some Stargate to the background. And an even army supply almost to that Ariung. Yeah. Just the, the money game was a Ariung favorite situation for so long. Storm's come down, but Ariung actually pulls the SCVs away. Normally, we just watch Saren players have those die. So only six SCVs die to like three Storms. Not common. Hmm. Yeah, that was a very nice reaction. Uh, a couple of charge lets get warped in, though, and those SCVs are kind of weak now. This is a very odd portion of the army because Ryung had split it up, so that was dangerous for a second, but Han kind of pulls back, and now Ryung just gets away with almost a like quadruple drop, run by whatever you want to call it, kills the third base, cleans up this run by of charge lots, no problem. Yeah, the wall there served uh, Ryung very well. Han kind of had to go all the way around with those charge lots that wanted to execute those delicious SCVs, but. All right, so Liberators are still the focus here. Ryung's even getting range on them, too. Weapon upgrades, you name it, it's the Liberator game for the Terran. Hanakana's going Tempest. I kind of like this, I just don't think he's got time to get enough of them to matter. His upgrades have fallen behind in a pretty horrible way, and I don't think two or three Tempests are going to save him. Yeah, I agree. I do like that he went for Tempest as opposed to trying to, to go for Colossus. I think that the Colossus would have been a little too late and even less helpful, but the Tempest apparently are also being produced on the front lines, so they're not going to get produced at all. Stark is going to be depowered, and the Liberators now don't really have a response. They're up to 10 in number, and Stalkers just can't really take that on. Those two Widomines, by the way, single-handedly spooked off this army. Now going to charge in. They're going to feel some, oh, really big Widomine hits. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> I mean, they were really supposed to cover maybe the Blinken, but the Blinken charge lots as well. No dealing with the Liberators whatsoever, and Anakana, maybe great at PvP not able to take on Ryan. Well, that's two bases down, 30 probes in the hole, and Hanukkah doesn't seem like there's much. He can hold the main, maybe, but to get choked in your main still loses you the game. Hmm. For a base trade, sure, that's uh, probably the only possible way he wins this, but a lot of Liberators are actually kept back home, so they're gonna take out a majority of this army. It's entirely oh scared away. That army supply was at a point even. Soccer's playing forward, but Widowmines and Marauders should cover what's left. Storm are gonna, actually Storm takes out the Liberators, but GG still thrown. Ryung takes the 2-0 and advances on once more. He will advance on to face Innovation, who just breezed through his bracket. Nice. Oh, Zesta Nurcio is going on too. Classic versus Keen or Gumiho. Hero versus Impact. Ah, there's a lot of good matchups coming up, guys. Uh, I guess we'll probably follow this one, but it, I think no matter what we get our hands on, it's going to be good. So sit tight. We'll see you guys here in a couple minutes, and we'll be back with uh, a brand new game. Or I guess when we're back. <laughs>